स्टील फाउंड्री एक कास्ट आइन फाउंड्री एल्यूमिनियम फाउंड्री ऑल थ्री ऑफ दम अवर टर्न ओवर इज अप्रोक्सीमेटली अराउंड थ्री फिफ्टी करोड टू गेट दैट कैप्टिव डिमांड इन हाउस दैट इज वाई देवर फोर्स टू स्टार्ट फाउंड्रीज Uh, do you think the situation has changed today are, are foundries maybe uh, leading the way and then starting a machine shop or is it still the backward integration now? no 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 he is now chairman of uh, of our vescon uh, 2024 so what exactly is vescon like for a new foundry person maybe on our channel i think they will gain a lot of knowledge so our request will be the all the foundry people must come and join this vescon this time there is a lot of Welcome back to the Foundry Podcast, guys. Uh, today we're sitting here with Mr. Mishra, uh, the managing director of uh, Valkin Technologies Private Limited, a very large uh, company uh, which started 20, 23 years ago. The reason we are here today is because he's also chairman of the organizing committee for Westcon 2024. So he's going to first give us a little bit of his background, uh, how he started Valkin, some industry insights, uh, the new steel foundry that they are now starting that I've just heard about, uh, and also later on uh, why people should come to Westcon. Uh, what the theme is about and uh, you know how you can maybe meet him over the two days uh, that you'll be coming to west uh, you joined valk in 2001 you mentioned yeah. right uh, so how was your inception uh, journey like like what was your prior background how did you how did you get into the valkin uh, group in the first place basically i was uh, general manager general manager northern region grief cotton company limited okay and grief cotton is a very renowned uh, engineering company manufacturing large number of engineering products So I was having a good background because of this region for the various products, and uh, that's the main reason why Vulcan Group has selected me as a marine director to start the company in India. We started in June 2001, and now we have got a three plants in India. Okay, so L- when you started in 2001, what was the status like? Like, what product did you all get into? Uh, how many? Uh, how did you all start uh, getting into the market? basically our main products for the balkan group is the torsional flexible couplings required for the marine and industrial application okay and second product is lock ring used in the refrigeration and air conditioning field okay so our focus was that we should manufacture in india this products and supplies to indian customers that okay. was the main focus that was the main idea of yeah, starting the plant and yes and okay. we were having a very small plant initially Right, right. Yeah. So you start in two thousand one mainly for marine industry and for lock rings. You mentioned yeah. right? marine and industrial application. Industrial application for the right. torsional flexible coupling. Vulcan okay. has got a very brand, good brand worldwide, okay. known as a Vulcan coupling supplier. Okay, okay. Mm. So, so they were trying to manufacture in India to uh, lower the cost and to get a reliable source. Uh, what, what was the objective? Main aim was that you should supply to the Indian customers. Okay. Later on. after one year they also realized that the cost of the production in india is very low compared to germany then they started taking the interest well. that why not we you should make the products and supplies to germany also correct correct so this mm-hmm. so eventually they figured out that they could even export from india yes okay and that's how the expansion uh, began yes. uh, so take us uh, to today uh, it's been a really long journey i think about 23 uh, years i believe mm-hmm. uh, marvelous growth so far Uh, what is can you give us an idea of today's uh, turnover for the indian indian operations our turnover is approximately around 350 crores okay so that's a very very big growth for for 20 uh, year run yes so it's a good growth and we are growing by minimum around 10% okay every year yeah. okay that's amazing so uh, very very quickly uh, what were some initial hiccups that you saw while starting the plant because uh, did you also have a foundry when you started in uh, 2001 no the fo- focus was not the foundry focus was that we should get the f- castings from the casting suppliers right rubber products from the rubber supplier and do the assembly and supply to the correct. indian customers correct since we failed everywhere not only for the steel casting not only for the aluminum parts also the rubber vulcanization parts we tried several places correct almost for one year approximately we tried from the various suppliers somehow they could not meet the specification as per the german standard and most of the parts failed when we sent the parts to germany for the testing okay. purpose so you were almost like forced into starting your own yeah. captive foundry yes, because of yes. the demand the we okay. were forced to start first aluminum foundry rubber vulcanization very small level right only to focus for our products and later on somewhere around 2005 we 
we decided to start a steel foundry also. 2005. Yeah. So it's almost, I think, 20, 20 years since the steel foundry would be, uh, have, yeah. have been, uh, been yes. inception. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, you, you already have like 20 years of uh, foundry background now. Uh, but I, I believe that Vulcan is mainly focusing on, on end parts, right? Yes. Uh, on, the, on the assemblies and maybe uh, sub-assemblies. So those side of the things. So foundry might be a very small business of the whole overall Vulcan technology uh, business today. Correct? But yet you have a ferrous uh, steel foundry, a cast iron foundry, an aluminium foundry, all three of them. Basically, we have ductile iron, I mentioned to you, and also the alloy steel, both low and high alloy. Correct. And also stainless steel and duplex steel. Correct. In case of aluminium foundry, we have got a gravity die casting as well as sand casting. Okay. And we are now going further expansion, we are doing now, for the stainless steel, duplex steel, both sand casting and duplex, uh, sand casting and sand dual casting. Okay. We have now purchased ad additional land now, just beside to this land. And we will be starting the construction work shortly. So, this, this plant would be mainly a foundry? Yeah, this is a foundry for okay. stainless steel and duplex steel. Okay. Sand casting as well as central casting. Okay. We got very good high response from the almost large number of companies located in Europe. Okay. To, to buy uh, castings directly? To buy car casting from us. Okay. So, that just shows that the casting demand is not just uh, something that everybody is talking about, but actually happening yes. uh, as you are witnessing uh, clearly. So the fact that Vulcan is actually investing in starting another steel foundry shows it proof of demand. Yes. In in essence. Yes, we got a very good response. Correct. Last two years, we have added a large number of customers. Right. In our plant. Right. That's amazing. Uh, so today's opportunity. Uh, where do you think? Because I think earlier, what uh, the theme that we saw is companies mainly had a machining uh, sort of setup. And they slowly, slowly backward integrated into a foundry because, as you said, maybe they weren't getting castings on time. Uh, like there was a problem with quality, maybe development was a problem. So to get that captive de uh, demand in-house, that is why they were forced to start foundries. Uh, do you think the situation has changed today? Are, are foundries maybe uh, leading the way and then starting a machine shop or is it still the backward integration? Now? No, no, no. Now is the more is the, to make the manufacture the castings. And why we should do machining? Because so that, you know, since you are supplying a very uh, good quality product, it is very important that you should supply the finished product to the customers. That's why we got a very good infrastructure in our in-house right. for machining also. And we are also using the large number of our sub supplier for machining. We, our theme is that we must supply finished product to the customer right. rather than supplying only the raw costing. Correct. Even, even today's foundry exhibitions, uh, they focus very heavily on even the machining tool side of, of things because they've understood that value addition from the machining side is very important. Yes, very important. Uh, would you like to share some very key big uh, upgrades that you've done to your, for your machine shop? Yeah, I mean, you can our machine shop, we have got all kinds of machines, so very big machines, BMC, we have got a large number, we have got a uh, VTL, we have got a HMC machines, we have got a 5-axis machine, CNC centers. So we are uh, keep on putting the new machine depends upon the increase in business. And we, again, we have ordered two, three, four machines, three machines right, right now. Right. And we are going to add additional two after uh, maybe three months. Focus is that supply the casting fully in finished condition. Correct. Correct. That's great. So uh, I, I think I have a couple of questions here more for you about Vulcan. Uh, you have aluminium, cast iron as well as steel. Uh, do you see one is maybe beating the other or replacing the other? What just just uh, something maybe you're observing? Both are having a different application, and both are growing very well. Okay. Aluminium is also doing very well right now. We have added a large number of customers in last two three years, and same way we are also adding more customer in uh, our uh, steel foundry means. Uh, more focus is now stainless steel and duplex steel. Okay, okay. So stainless steel and duplex steel, you think, has the bigger chance of growth. Mm. All right. Uh, so anyway, the real reason we are here today is to uh, to interview Mr. Mishra uh, because he is now chairman of uh, of our Vescon uh, 2024. So what exactly is Vescon? Like for a new foundry person, maybe on our channel, uh, what is Vescon? Uh, can you? Yeah, yeah it's the West Region Foundry Association, and this time they are organizing their uh, Westcon conference in Pune and, and the Pune region and also the Indo region jointly organizing this particular function in the month of December. Okay. And uh, our theme is this time is global outreach, expanding frontiers, expectation and rewards. 
तो बेसिकली ग्लोबल आउटरीच इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग कंसिडरिंग द टूडेज सिनारियो वेन यू नो दैट रिसेंट इलेक्शन इन यू एस ए ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी ए वेरी गुड एडवांटेज सिचुएशन फॉर द इंडिया एज यू नो चाइना रिलेशन विथ यू एस ए एंड नाउ मिस ट्रम्प इज ज्वाइनिंग एज ए प्रेसिडेंट अगेन होपफुली India will get more favor from the big companies they may shift the focus from China to India so this is a good opportunity for all us for all of us to at least focus on this and try to get more and more export orders that's where that's the reason why the, our theme is global outreach got it i think you also answered my next question which is uh, why foundry people should attend westcon Yes. it's very clear at the usp are there any other benefits for a foundry person coming to westcon yes this time the uh, we are covering lot of technical papers and also the lot of companies are coming to show you their, their products so definitely your team from your foundry when they comes to attend this conference i think they will gain a lot of knowledge so our request will be the all the foundry people must come and join this bestcon this time there is a lot of thoughts have been put on this how to organize the bestcon this year and i'm sure that when you go out from the conference you will have a lot of things in your mind to do so in your foundry i can tell you from uh, first hand experience that uh, over the last few years coming to westcon for various events whether it was kolhapur or uh, daman uh, this year pune Uh, it's something that gets the whole western region together you know because we are always working with people from the western region uh, for if between the different chapters and the only time we actually get to meet everybody for the whole region is one maybe during our our meetings yes our annual meeting and also uh, westcon good networking so, good networking and, and also definitely when you meet the people definitely you will exchange your views with them correct and naturally that will that is a good place at least 2 3 days uh, you should spend here and uh, i'm sure that it will help you to your foundry people also uh, to gain additional knowledge right so thank you sir so much yeah. uh, for sharing uh, really good insights yeah. into westcon uh, will you be there at the event yeah definitely i'll be there so if you guys come uh, another bonus is you get to meet mr mishra in person and ask him how he's built uh, such a big uh, huge company uh, i'm sure there's a there's a uh, where can people uh, find find you by you can see our website vulcanindia.com uh, you will get the entire details of our company and of course when we meet we will tell you more about the other company great so we'll be looking forward to meeting you at the event sir yes sir thank you thank very you. much thank, thank you. you very much thank, thank you, you.